here's what I want to do. I would like to approximate the area. Now remember, I'm using under, sort of facetiously here, under f of x equals x squared. Let's go from, oh, I don't know, what's a reasonable from, let's go from 0 to 4. Okay? So first thing we're going to do is let's give ourselves a quick little sketch. I know y equals x squared looks like that, right? This is y equals x squared. And I'll go out one. Ooh, I'm going to need a bigger. I'm sorry, you guys. Do bear with me for just a sec. I want to make this thing a little bigger so we can really see what's going on here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm going to make this guy pretty good size. All right. Pardon me. We'll go one, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four. Two, one, two, three, four. Three, and one, two, three, four, four. Okay. And I'm going to clearly my scale on my y axis is going to be a little bit janky, but that's okay. Okay. So this is f of x from zero to four. So this is one, two, three, and four. And this guy's going to go way up here, of course. Ooh. Let's make that a little flatter. I have a little hard time with my graphing this afternoon, huh? Let's make it so that we can actually play with it a little bit. Like that. Just like that. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's, how do you want to do this? Well, if I want my sub intervals, if I want delta x, if I want delta x, to equal 1, right? Then doesn't that tell me that n is going to be 4? True, because then doesn't this imply that delta x is equal to 4 minus 0 divided by 4, affectionately known as 1? Okay, so let's build some rectangles. Uh oh, well, where do I want my height of my rectangles to be? Do I want my height of my rectangle? So my first one is going to be delta x, y, but do I want to take my height, I'll do this first one in black, do I want to take it on the right hand side of the interval so that I make this rectangle, right? Okay, and then this guy we know is delta x, y as well, right? Delta x, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to build that rectangle, and then I'm going to go, I know this is delta x again, I won't bore you with writing that again. Wow, that was a terrible line, but you get the picture. And I'm going to make that. Now, why, you may ask, do I have to put it on the left, the right, or the middle, or somewhere else? Well, remember, I want a predictable way to find these heights. I want a predictable way to figure out how tall these things are. Okay? And if I, if I affix that, if I attach it to the function, it's really easy for me to be able to do that. Now, this one's going to get ugly, I can tell you right now. Oh, maybe not so bad. Oh, look at that. Ripley learns. Ripley learns. So up we go, and there we go. All right. Now notice, I can figure out how tall that is. Well, how tall is this first one? Or what's the area of this first one? I didn't give myself much room on this first one. Well, we know I'm going to say area sub 1 is equal to the width, which we know is 1, times the height, which we know is f of 1 affectionately know it as 1 times 1. Again, my scale is a little janky. So I know that thing, that thing's area is 1. How about this guy? Well, area sub 2, I know the width is 1, because I made it that way, times f of 2. So it's going to be 1 times 4, which is 4. Right? Okay, how about this, this guy right here? This is going to be area sub 3. It's the third subinterval. I know the width is 1, times f of 3. Now, why is it f of 3? Because that's the height right here that I took it at. That's the height of this rectangle. So f of 3. So this is going to be 1 times 9, or 9. And then last but not least, this is, I think I, I have enough room here to put it right in the rectangle. That, and I'm out of space. Yeah. So area sub 4. Area sub 4 is going to be 1 width times f of 4, which is equal to 1 times 16, or 16. So I know that the overall area of that uh, area underneath the curve is going to be approximately equal to a1 plus a2 
plus a3 plus a4, which is 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, affectionately known as what, 30? That appears to be approximately equal to 30. Now, <laughs> there's a way that we can that we talk about this. This is called a right rectangular approximation method. Now, why is it right? Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Affectionately known as R RAM. Why is it a right rectangular? Because we used on this interval, let me change colors, because on this interval right here, I use the right hand side to get the heights. Notice, right hand side, right hand side, right hand side to get the heights. So in this case, there's a, a shorthand notation that we can use, and we would just call this because there's four subintervals, right? That's what I decided on. This is referred to in this case as R sub 4, which is equal to 30 and is approximately equal to the area under the curve. Now, immediately, hopefully, if all's going well, you look at that and you're like, wait, 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 Ridley, th this is an over approximation. All these rectangles are too big. I get too much area here and here and here and here. It's way too big. Well, what do you propose? I got too much. How about instead of using the right-hand side, we do an LRAM, all right, which is, as you can imagine, is going to be a left rect approx method. But in our case, we're actually going to do an L4 because that's the number of subintervals. Now, wait, wait, wait. I need to redraw before we get too crazy. All right, so let me, let me erase this L4, and I'll put the L4 down at the bottom after I've redrawn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now this time, I'll put this guy over here, and I don't have to get as crazy with my, with my stuff. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to go like this, right? So this guy right here is f of x equals x squared. Now let me change the color of my pants. I'll use orange because it's obnoxious. Now think about it. Delta x is still b minus a over n, which we know is going to be 4 minus 0 over 4, because I've said that n equals 4. I've told myself that, or it's been told to me. So I know that delta x is equal to 1. All right, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now watch. This first subinterval is going to be a little tricky. We know that it is delta x, y, but the left-hand interval of it has no height because I'm starting it at 0, right? So right here, I know that f of 0 equals 0, which implies that the area of the first rectangle is going to be, the area of the first rectangle is going to be 1 wide times 0 tall, actually known as 0. Now let's look at the second rectangle, all right? Now notice I'm working off of this subinterval. So I start on the left-hand side, right here, and I build my rectangle, right? And I'm, wow, my rectangle isn't getting drawn. And I'm building this guy right here. This is a sub 2, which is what? Think about it. It's one wide, and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's f of 1 tall, because I use the left-hand side right here. So this is going to be 1 times 1, affectionately known as 1. Now let's build the next guy right here, right there. I'm going to bring an arrow straight down. This is going to be a3, which is 1 wide, and f of 2 tall, which is 1 times 4, or 4. And then last but not least, I'm going to build this guy, which is a sub 4, which is 1 wide by, notice, remember, left-hand side of the interval. So it's f of 3 tall, which is 1 times 9, or 9. So what does that tell us? That tells us that l sub 4 is equal to what? It's going to be 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 which is 14, and this is approximately equal to the area under the curve. Well, again, you may be saying, Ripley, wait, this is an under approximation. I got all this area that I'm missing from 0 to 4. I'm missing all that. Well, what's being begged for right now? What's being begged? Let's, let's take up plenty of space when we do this. 
Well, you may say, what I need is the Goldilocks of rectangular, approx rectangular, rectangular approximation methods. I'm getting so heated, i got to take a drink of water. What I need is an MRAM. I'm not going to write this out. All right, M MRAM, a middle. So this is middle appro rectangular approximation method. I don't want to bore you with having me All right, write this thing out. So let's look at, we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to draw this one big again. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, that was pretty good right there. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What, does that give me my four? Cool. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Now these get a little trickier, but they're not too bad. I realize again my scale is jacked. This is f of whoops. I'm going to be in my own way here when I start putzing around. Uh, oh, sorry. So this is going to be f of x equals x squared. Okay, so again, n equals 4, which implies that delta x equals 4 minus 0 over 4, which is actually known as 1, which is good. Now, what happens here? Well, instead of grabbing the left-hand side or the right-hand side, we grab the middle. So this happens at a half. So I go up to my curve. And remember, I'm using my curve as a point of reference to build these rectangles. So I go up to my curve, and I grab it. Okay, where does the next one occur? Well, the width is 1. Each one of these are 1 wide. So the middle of the next interval should be 1 half plus 1, affectionately known as 3 halves, or 1.5. So now I go up to my curve, and I build my rectangle. Right? Add another 1, and that's going to be... 5 halves. I'm going to go up to my curve and I build my rectangle. You see how easy it is? And you might say, Ripley, this is so easy. It's, it's boring. It's almost it's, it's sophomoric. You're right. And they did that on purpose. So 7 halves, which is 3.5, they want it to be really, really simple. Like when we found the slopes of tangent lines. Remember, we started with slopes, which you learned back in Algebra 1. Heck, the geometry required to be able to approximate areas underneath curves, you learned, again, what, eighth, or excuse me, third grade, something like that? All right, let's look at the areas of this. Well, area sub 1 is going to be 1 wide times what? Well, f of a half. True? So this is going to be 1 times 1 fourth, which is a fourth. Okay, well, that's cool. So let's do this guy. I'm going to put them over there. A sub 2 is 1 wide times 3 halves squared, or f of 3 halves. No, I'm not going to be able to wedge an f in there, am I? It's going to look ter terrifically horrible. So 1 times, where the heck am I? f of 3 halves, which is equal to 9 fourths. Now, let's start taking these over here. This is A sub 3. What's that one going to be? It's 1 wide times f of 5 halves, which is equal to 25 fourths. And then last but not least, a sub 4 is equal is 1 wide and f of 7 halves, which we know is 1 times 49 fourths or 49 fourths. So I know, you're ready, here it comes, m sub 4 is equal to 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49 all over 4. They all have the same common denominator, right? So what is that? Uh, where are we? 35, what is that, 84 fourths? 84. Let me, make, let me double check that. 10, 35, 79, 84 fourths. Affectionately known as, you guessed it, 21. And this is approximately equal to the area.